I'm playing a 51025 live stream with none other than the Prince of Poker, Scotty Wynn. I'm in for $10,000 and get into multiple 10K pots, including a huge all in with Scotty himself. In the end, I cash out for the biggest amount of my life. Grab some popcorn, the action starts now. Can I get a bang, Scotty? You got it, baby. You, you said bang. Bang, baby. Bang. Let's go. <laughs> So, looks like we're starting off strong already here with a 5, luck, 10, everyone. 25 with a restraddle of 50 yeah. by Jared. Let's have fun. Let's have fun. That's what we're going Let's to Let's get angry. One of the first hands of the night, there was already a double up all in, allowing us to top up to $10,000. So, I have 9.8K in my stack to start off the night. I look down from the small blind at King Jack offsuit, and I decided to raise up the action to $175. We're gonna get called in one spot. Joe Lau decides to come in with the premium of 8-7 offsuit, and we are heads up to a flop, which gives us nothing, 10-5 deuce, and I decide to start with a check out of position. Pretty self-explanatory, although I'm still gonna have all the over pairs. Just really isn't a great board for my range. I check it over to Joe, and he decides to check behind, giving me the best hand. Well, I guess I had the best hand the entire way, but now I'm sure of it. I decide to fire out into him for 150 bucks. When he folds, we build some momentum here. You can see I'm wearing the Reserve Poker Club hoodie. Go check them out. And my new merch, the Pocket Sevens hat. Let's see how lucky they are tonight. There's a cool Wolf logo on the back. The link to buy them is down in the description. All right, this next hand is a fun one. I look down at Ace Queen Offsuit from the small blind. 9.3K in my stack. And we got a call from OG John. The $50 straddle is on. So I decide to make it $225. I'll be out of position against anyone who puts in the call, so I want to go large here. And a good thing I did because we are going to get called in two spots. We're going to get called by Rob with the 6-4 suited. We're going to get called by Joe Lau. And excuse my French, we're actually going to get called in three spots. OG John puts in the call as well, leading us off to an action flop, which comes queen 5-4, giving me top pair, top kicker. Interesting spot because they're going to have the fives, pocket fours, they're going to have six, seven, and uh, ace three, ace deuce a lot of the time. But I have top pair good kicker here, so I decide to bet out into the field and charge a lot of those draws, and I bet out for $400. Rob here has an interesting decision, and uh, he decides to put in the call. A little bit loose, but I like his play here, and OG John isn't going anywhere with his open and straight draw. He puts in the 400 bucks as well, and we are off to the turn, which is an action card. It comes the queen of clubs. Clubs, bang, we turn three of a kind. I say action card because it gives me three of a kind. Didn't really need it, I had the best hand on the flop, but what it does bring in is the flush draw for OG John. He now has an open-ended straight draw and a flush draw. You can see Rob is drawing completely dead here, poor Rob. But even though I have three of a kind, OG John has a 33% chance to win this hand. Interesting decision for me here. I think if the opponents have a queen in the hand, they're gonna bet it anyways. A lot of those sets that now turned a boat are gonna have me dead, like pocket fives and pocket fours. So I kind of like balancing my range here and going for some checks. If I'm only checking here with hands that I give up, then uh, they can just blow me off hands pretty easily on the turn and river. So I want to put some good hands in there, and I put ace-queen into my checking range, and check it over to Rob, who bets out for 1.5k. I mean, I don't blame him. My line looks kind of weak. Raising pre, betting flop, and checking turn, it kind of screams ace-king and ace-jack. When he bets out for 1.5k and OG John isn't putting in the raise, he just puts in the 1.5k. The action is back over to me. Now, obviously, there are some hands we have to be worried about, such as pocket fives and pocket fours. But at the same time, if I'm calling here, I'm pretty much committing myself to go all the way in this hand. So I might as well just get my entire stack in. OG John is 1.8K, and Rob does have a good amount behind. But I decide, let's play for all of it. I rip my entire stack all in. And great news for us is when the larger of the two, Rob, he lets his hand go. Obviously, he doesn't have a boat. That's great news for us. If OG John has a boat, we can only lose up to 1.8K. And uh, he actually goes into the tank. So at this point, I know I have the best hand now. Nearly two out of three times, I am going to scoop this pot. After a little bit of a decision, John decides to put in the call. And we are going to run this hand out twice. It's a nearly 10.2k pot, so a massive one here in Toledo, Ohio. We turn over our hands, and I see that he does have a ton of outs. I was really hoping he had a hand like Queen-10 or Queen-9. Wolfgang is hungry for a huge hunk right here. And a six, six no and help. That's a safe card for Wolfgang. Wolfgang knowing he's getting half the hold. pot now. And, and wow, he okay. Ways. Wolfgang poker in the house. Wolfgang up to 15K. Now he Scooping did add on, but wow. 10.2K coming into my stack. 
And just like that, we're two for two on the night, up to 15.6K in my stack. Wolfgang is up to 15.6K. Wow, what a hand. Caleb's yeah. still at 11.3. You were even saying earlier, I said this will definitely go over 100K. This next hand here, we see Angry Joe start the action off by raising it up to 175. I find myself on the button and decide to put in the call for 175 with King Queen offsuit. I think against a loose opening range here from Angry Joe, I gotta be three betting and make it like 450 to 500, but that's neither here nor there. That brings in OG John as well. Another downside to just putting in the call. Now we are three ways to a flop, which does give me middle pair comes Ace King Seven Rainbow. When OG John checks it over to Angry Joe, he decides to bet out for $200 into the field. I can't go anywhere for that price. I put in the call, John gets out of the way and we see the nine of spades peel off on the turn. Angry Joe does not slow down. Out of position, he decides to bet out for one yellow chip, a pumpkin, it's $1,000, and the action's over to me. I don't look too happy about this spot, but I think this goes back to the action preflop. If I just three bet, it's most likely Angry Joe and OG John get out of the way, and we're just done with the hand. Now I find myself in a tough spot where I don't know exactly what I have. He could have ace queen, ace jack, ace 10. He could even have ace king, pocket sevens, pocket nines. I mean, the world is Angry Joe's oyster. For that reason, I decide to let go of my hand and lose the pot, but obviously you can see that I got bluffed. All right, it wouldn't be a Wolfgang Poker video without me playing my favorite hand, Pocket Sevens. Link for my hat is down below in the description. Go check it out. Angry Joe opens it up to $75, and I'm looking to get some retribution here, and I decide to three bet him now. Haven't looked at the stream in real time, but I just feel like he's opening light, and uh, I decide to three bet him to 225 with Pocket Sevens, which I definitely love. Angry Joe decides to defend his open. We are heads up to a flop, which comes 5-4-3 with two diamonds. How good does this guy run? He just flops the wheel against me. I have an overpair and a gutter to the straight. When he checks, I think I could be doing some checking behind. He's gonna have all of those pocket pairs. I really shouldn't have any of them. But instead, I look to represent all my overpairs here in strong draws, and I bet out for a one third the size of the pot for $150. Angry Joe now goes for the check raise and he makes it a little 4X all the way up to $600. In the grand scheme of things, I probably could be putting in the call here in the long run, but something just didn't feel right and I actually make an exploitative fold. Just get rid of my hand and uh, live to fight another day. My thought process here was if he has a set, I'm pretty much just drawing to a seven or a six. If he has a flush draw, he's probably not gonna slow down on the turn or river. If he has like a pair plus straight draw, same thing. He's not slowing down. So I'm not just calling 450 here. I'm probably gonna be calling another 1K on the turn and then another 3K on the river. Just didn't wanna get myself into a tough spot. And uh, I make the fold here as a 25% dog, which actually was the best play in the moment. Oh, and a fold. Uh, nice so fold by Wolfgang. Bang! Oh, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Oh, hey, I, I just got, a, I got a <laughs> questions. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> this isn't just any hand, this is the hand of the night, possibly the hand of my poker career. If you guys haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do it before this hand comes out. This one is absolutely insane, and we need all the run good we can have here. All right, Scotty Wynn, the Prince of Poker, opens it up to $150 over a straddle with the ladies. Pretty standard so far. I'm on the dealer button, and I look down at five deuce of hearts. How can this possibly be potentially the hand of my poker career and I have such a trash hand like five deuce of hearts? Well, I got invited to play a live stream and I need to play some hands. You gotta keep that V pip up. Scotty's in the hand, I'll have position on him. This could be a three bet spot with a trash hand, but instead I just put in the call. I'm also gonna be doing this with a lot of pocket pairs and maybe some suited aces and stuff like that. So I put in the call and we are going off to a flop three ways. OG John comes in as well. The more the merrier, we are off to a flop which comes gin for me without having anything. It comes 864 with two hearts. I have a double gutter to the straight. Any three or seven will give me a straight. Additionally, I have those two hearts in my hand and one heart in my chest for calling five deuce preflop for 150. That's neither here nor there. 490 in the middle of the pot. OG John starts with a check. Scotty starts with a bet. Pretty standard so far, and now we have an interesting decision. Calling here is definitely an option. Folding off the table, what are we doing for folding? But I think an interesting play here would actually be going for a raise. Do I think he's gonna fold his exact hand pocket queens to a single raise? No, 
But that being said, I'm gonna have fours, sixes, and eights. I'm also gonna have all those strong draws like ace five of hearts, ace 10 of hearts, ace jack of hearts. So starting off here with a semi bluff might actually be the best play in the long run and then continuing on turns and rivers. And even if I miss, just trying to blow them off a hand like queens or kings. Instead though, I take the more passive route and I put in the call, OG John does as well. He has a gutter to the straight and two over cards. And we see Jin on the turn, it comes the queen of hearts. Look at this. Queen oh, of no. Hearts on what the a, turn what a for Scotty Wynn, gives Wolfgang the flush. I say Jin, and I've never meant that term more. The Queen of Hearts gives Scotty top set. It gives me the flush. How much better of a card could we hope to see on the turn? OG John starts with a check. We gotta get stacks in here on the turn of river. This is gonna be a large one. When OG John checks it over to Scotty, he bets out for $800. I don't blame him, he's beating all of my sets now and only losing to flushes and straights. That being said though, I gotta put more money in now to try to get the rest of Scotty's stack in by the river, and I decided that the right price is 2K. You can see I went in between two and three X his raise. You don't need to go too large here. I'm in position and I'm not really scared of any river card. Unless it's another heart, that would be kind of gross, like the king of hearts or ace of hearts. When I raise it up to 2K, John has an easy fold, and the action's back over to Scotty. I think jamming it all in is fine from him. It might be a slight overplay, but at the same time, he has a set. The board could pair, he could win, and uh, he also doesn't want to see another heart. But he decides to put in the additional 1.2K, and we're off to the river, which comes about as clean as it can, the jack of clubs. Scotty snap checks it over to me. There's 5.4K in the middle. Scotty has 3.5K left in his stack. This is a no brainer all in. I posture for a second and I'm in my head thinking, how am I in such an amazing spot? I'm against one of my poker idols. I have basically the nuts and the hand and I'm about to go all in and he's probably gonna call me. Sure enough, I rip it all in. Scotty doesn't think too long before tossing in one chip. I turn over the goods, five deuce suited. I can't believe I'm gonna scoop this 12.3K pot. Oh Shows my lord. Set. Wow, what wow, a turn card. Huge hand. That wow. is amazing. When I see his hand, I know that we got into a cooler there and I'm just on the right side of it. This is an insane feeling. Up 6.4K in this hand alone and my stack has finally crossed the 20K mark, the most I've ever had in my stack at any point in my poker career. Even though Scotty Wynn is a legend of the game, it doesn't exempt him from getting banged by me. And yeah, I pull out a sticker and the rest is history. So Scotty, I gotta be honest with you. Whenever I win a hand, or like a big pot, yeah, that's my saying, I say, oh, bang. bang. <laughs> but it, it gets worse. Why don't it, you it gets, do that? It gets worse, because I, I felt bad because you're the prince of poker, but I, got, oh, I gotta oh, put this, on. I gotta put this on you, Scotty. This, this, this is how it works, this is how it works. I gotta bang Scotty Wynn. All right, yeah, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah, he's bang. a good, he's a good person, look at this. He's that, taking it like a champ. Sports, Can I get a bang? Bang, baby. Appreciate you. I love you, Scotty. That from the Wolf Gang, baby. I didn't want. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want it's to do it, but I had to. I had. To. Scotty tops back up, and we're gonna find ourselves in another hand with him here. I look down at Ace King offsuit from the plus one position, and I raise it up to 175. Caleb puts in the call. Angry Joe surprisingly folds his hand. And action's back over to Scotty Wynn with King Queen of Spades. And he decides not to come in for the three bet. He makes the call and we are off four ways to a flop with OG John in there as well. The flop comes monotone, but we do have top pair. King nine five, all clubs. Caleb has nothing. What else is new, Caleb? No, just kidding, man. He checks it over to Scotty who uh, checks in flow over to me. The board is monotone. People are gonna have some sets like pocket fives and pocket nines. So I decide to check behind bringing in a harmless three of diamonds. Don't tell Caleb that, he bets out for 325. This 325 isn't to try to win the pot. He knows Scotty and I both have a king. This bet is to get him invited to every single home game under the sun. Scotty now springs a trap and raises it up to $825 in the actions over to me. Obviously seeing the equity and our hands, I have a 72% chance to win this. So yeah, I obviously have to come in for the raise of the call, right? Well, it's not so simple. Caleb betting out into four people is very strong. This is a board that's gonna connect well with him a lot of the time. He's gonna have those flushes, those sets, those two pairs. All the combos are on the table for Caleb. That being said, Scotty has been playing pretty solid. So when he raises Caleb's bet into four people, that screams extreme strength. And even though he checked the flop, he would be doing that with pretty much his entire range when I was the one raising preflop and he's out of position to me. So even though he checked on the flop, I'm not discrediting any flushes or any sets from Scotty. 
So yeah, I'm gonna make a fold here and just hope that either Caleb or Scotty has it. When Caleb snap folds, that's not great news for me. But uh, Scotty tells me that uh, he had it. So I believe him in the moment. Obviously seeing now, I uh, know that I had the best hand, but you can't win them all. I'm still over 20K in my stack and I'm feeling pretty great. All right, this next hand is a fun one. Angry Joe opens it up to $200 with a seven offsuit. Jared puts in the call with a suited queen jack. He's looking to flop Broadway. Scotty gets out of the way and I look down at the ducks, quack quack, from the third blind. I'm in the $25 blind and I just toss in two black chips. That brings in Rob and Joe. Side note, Joe could probably put in a squeeze here all the way up to like 1200 bucks and probably take it down, but he doesn't. He puts in the call and we are going five ways to a flop, which comes good for me. Four, three, deuce, bang, we flop bottom set. Obviously ace five and five six have me beat, but we're not worried about monsters in the closet. When Jared checks it over to me, I think this is a great board to go for a lead on. I'm gonna have all those pocket pairs and two pairs. So I bet out for 375. I don't want someone to catch up with their diamond draw like Jared. They gotta pay the price and I decide to bet small. Angry Joe decides to peel with the ace of diamonds in his hand. It's a pretty strong card. The flush comes in, he could represent that he has the nuts. He also has the wheel draw. And uh, Jared with two diamonds makes a pretty easy call as well. Off to the turn, which comes a harmless 10 of clubs. Jared checks it over to me in flow. And now I decide to size up into the 2.1K pot. I bet $650. Maybe size up wasn't the best phrase to use. I think uh, I kind of bet a little bit too small here. If I'm putting them on all the draws, I need to bet larger and charge them. 650, although it is a good amount of money, it's just not a lot compared to the size of the pot. That brings in Angry Joe, and surprisingly, Jared makes an insane fold here with a Queen Jack of Diamonds. He had a good amount of equity in that hand, 20% uh, to be exact, but he finds a fold. And good thing for him that he did because the King of Spades peels off on the river. He would have rivered himself an open-ended straight draw, but uh, just Queen Hind at that point. Now with my set here, I have one of two options, checking or betting. Angry Joe has called me on the flop and turn, the king of spades connects well with his preflop raising range. He could have pocket kings, ace, king, king, queen, although the diamond draw did brick off. So if I am able to find a sneaky check here and he did have diamonds, he could probably represent that to the tune of two to three K. Obviously I'd snap call him and we'd win a nice pot. If I bet out here, I'm really only gonna get called by uh, sets, straights, two pairs, and uh, those flush draws probably aren't gonna come in for a raise. So I really like checking here and calling off all those bluffs. You almost wonder right now if Wolfgang would check to induce a bluff, and he did. I was just in the process of saying that. Nice play yeah. by Wolfgang. That's what I decided to do, and Angry Joe goes into the tank for a while. I mean, at this point, it's probably pushing around two minutes. Eventually, he does decide to check behind. I announce set. He looks at me like he knows I have it. I turn over my cards, and he mucks. I later told him if he was betting there, I was snap calling, so he definitely saved a good amount of money. All right, it's the last hand of the night from me, and what else would we play other than pocket kings? We find ourselves in a great spot where OG John starts off with a raise from the button to $140. Get the small blind Caleb and the third blind in Jared putting in the call for $140. And that's not gonna fly with me. I decide to make a large re-raise. I will be out of position. I need to size up and I make it $875. Only OG John puts in the call. We are going heads up to a flop, which comes pretty harmless, five, four, three. I mean, sure he could have ace deuce like we saw Angry Joe had earlier. He also could have some of those sets, but uh, he did raise pre and then call a large re-raise. So I don't really think he has a better hand than me at this point. That being said, when you think you have the best hand, it's time to put more money in the middle. And I bet out for $750, which is a great sizing. I don't wanna go too large. I wanna keep all those pocket tens, jacks, queens in there. Even some ace king like we see he has, still have to call for a small sizing. And uh, he does, he puts in the call. More money coming my way. We are off to the turn, which comes the nine of diamonds. I really don't need to be doing a lot of checking on this turn, just wanna get more money in. John is super deep. You can see it says 1.4K in his stack, but he probably has around six to seven grand in actuality. So I decide to size up now and try to get stacks in by the river, and I bet out for $2,000. You can see his hand, this is an easy fold for him. He's just doing a little bit of Hollywooding at this point, but if I had the power to see through his cards and know he had ace king, obviously I would be checking, trying to get him to put in a stab on the turn of the river. But that's not what's gonna happen. He mucks his cards. We're gonna take down a nearly 6K pot. I wanted to pull up GTO Wizard for you guys and also for myself to see if I played that hand correctly. For this example, we're just gonna assume that I'm in the big blind because it's just kind of confusing with all these blinds out there. 
This is what OG John's opening range is gonna look like from the button. I'm in the big blind and I decide to three bet. This is what my raising range is gonna be like. You can see kings clearly in that 100% of the time. And John decides to put in the call from the button. You can see that uh, he kind of made a small mistake according to GTO. He's supposed to be re-raising with ace king, both the suited and uh, off suit variety. Just really gonna wanna be calling with a lot of these suited Broadway type hands. And then some of his pocket pairs and uh, suited connectors. Still, we're off to a flop which comes five, four, three. And uh, you can see in my spot, I'm gonna be wanting to do a lot of betting here. Occasionally, I could throw in some checks with my kings, but with my entire range, wanna be betting around 50% and then checking the other 50% as well. John's on the button in position. It doesn't show that any of the ace kings because he's not supposed to play it this way. But you can see that he's supposed to be calling with 60% of his range on this board. We're off to the turn which comes with the nine of diamonds. You can see on this turn card, I was thinking about maybe checking it over to him, but if we look at pocket kings, I'm supposed to be betting it nearly 100% of the time. It just depends on what sizing I wanna go for, but checking, definitely a mistake. Still wanna get value from all of his other pocket pairs. So really glad that I decided to bet there. He did end up folding, but let's just see what he would have decided to raise with. If he's raising on this turn, he can do it with pocket fives or pocket fours, which have a set, obviously pocket threes as well. Sixes have that open-ended straight draw, which is a good raise to make. Some of his jack 10 suited, which is an interesting raise, and ace nine suited as well. He wants to be raising, but uh, good thing we don't find ourselves in that spot. If he did raise there and we have kings, we're either gonna be calling or uh, ripping it all in. And really the only other hands we're gonna go with it there is pocket aces, pocket queens, jacks, and uh, nine eight suited. So yeah, if you guys wanna check out GTO Wizard, there is a discount code down in the description. It's a really valuable tool. And now let's hop into the live at the reserve announcer booth with Dominic Paul DeSano. Stacking Scotty when oh, even getting to do the bang. I mean, tell us what was going on through your mind during that hand. Have a great night. Uh, obviously, safe. five deuce of hearts, not the best hand to call 150 pre with, but we have we have implied odds. Meaning, if we if we make a big hand versus Scotty, there's the title of the video. There's everything, man. So that was huge. I mean, I had to call 150, and then once I see that flop, I'm going nowhere. In my head, I'm like. Heart, straight, anything. I put him on like an overpair, ace king type of hand. Pretty stoked there. That was, I mean, it wasn't the biggest pot of my life, but this was, if I'm booking it up right now, the biggest win of my life. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty sick. You're literally one of the players that's on the Mount Rushmore of poker right there. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it, it was unbelievable. No, it was fun to watch. I'm actually, uh, the, the reason why I'm calling it a little early here is I'm driving Chicago. I got to fly out tomorrow to Los Angeles. There's a few events at the Hustler I'm playing in. There's a meetup game tomorrow, and then Monday is Max Payne Monday. Gonna take a shot at that again. Oh, so yeah, I'm, I'm there, and then um, back in Chicago for the WSOP circuit event at Horseshoe Hammond. That'll be fun. I'll be there the first week of March. If you guys are in town, come say hi. And then we're driving to Dallas. I'm gonna check that Dallas out for yeah. six months. My mom months. lives in Dallas. My mom and stepdad live in Dallas. I love Dallas. Yeah, uh, I visit there about once or twice a year. Haven't um, announced it yet on the vlog, but Dallas is a cool city. So I'm gonna check it out for six months. Signed the lease. Shout out to Lou Sassel. Oh gosh, they got me to do it. <laughs> Bailey, you, uh, you. Uh, hopefully this doesn't get taken down from that. Yeah, don't say that in your head. We want to help each other out in the best way possible. I hope this is a relationship that we can keep going forward long term. Yeah, definitely. You are always welcome in this card room. As long as the cards keep coming my way, it's a relationship. Yes, no, you, you know, but hey, I'll you are back. always welcome in this card room. Thanks, it's man. always a pleasure. Shout out to everyone from Corona Beach, Jubs, and Jazz. Shout out to you. I'll be seeing you on the virtual felt tomorrow. Why? Why are you so confused? <laughs> right you guys we are exhausted but i have great news to report back my biggest win of my life got into that game for five topped up an additional five so in for 10 out for 23 550 profit of 13 550 thanks for all the support over the years we finally booked a big win broke the curse on the live streams and uh that's gonna get the job done. Big win, big success. Hope this video does really well. You guys are watching it right now. If you guys are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button. A lot of fun videos coming up. I got two videos from Hustler. I got a meetup, monster meetup game with over 300 people on the wait list. Then we have the 10, 20, 40 Hustler Live, Max Pay Monday coming up. Be sure to subscribe so you see that. Good luck on the felt as always, you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.